Hello, strong friends. Welcome back to the Courtney for Life podcast. And if you're joining us on YouTube, hello. And you can see our beautiful faces. I think I feel like we're both definitely like dressed for the occasion here. We're we're showing up entirely, not in like sweats and disasterness. But anyway, so we have the wonderful Coach Kayla here. And she wanted to, she was like friggin' begging me for this conversation. <laughs> she was like, we need to talk about maintenance. So here we are. She's actually going to lead the conversation. And I feel like we're just going to kind of shoot the shit back and forth and just have topics kind of come up as we go. And we, um, I, I think Kayla has notes. I don't have notes on this, but we're just going to see kind of where this goes and just let it flow naturally. So let's dig in. Kayla, welcome. So glad that you're back here. Thank you so much, Court. And I'm excited to be here and doing another podcast with you all about maintenance. Yay. Um, so basically what I want to talk about with you is just like kind of going back and forth and talking about the benefits of maintenance, um, challenges that we see clients kind of having within maintenance when we put them into a maintenance phase and just talking a little bit about what it is, the benefits of it and all that fun stuff. So basically just really quick going off like what maintenance is and what does being at like maintenance calories mean it's basically where you're eating a certain amount of calories where you're not in a calorie deficit and you're not in a surplus. So you're not building and you're not cutting. Um, you're basically at a calorie amount where you're maintaining your weight. And one thing with maintenance is that it's not a set range of, or not a set number of calories. It's a range and it's a wide range. It can be anywhere from like 150 to maybe 300 calorie ranges um, where you could be at maintenance for so it's not just one set number that your, your calories are going to be at. It's a range. Also with that is your maintenance calories can change over time. It's not something that's going to like pretend like your maintenance calories right now are 2000 calories right now um, or within that range. That doesn't necessarily mean that a year from now, your maintenance calories are going to be the exact same. They could be lower and they could be higher. So just want to talk about that a little bit and then go into the benefits of it and how being at maintenance calories is something that I find for clients, it's something they almost struggle with in a sense, because it's this, it makes them feel like they're regressing, like they're not in a certain goal oriented phase. They're not in a fat loss phase and they're not in a surplus phase. It, it almost seems like they're like, I feel like I'm stagnant. Well, no, you're not stagnant. The benefits of being in maintenance are, there's just so many of them. Like your, your improved sleep, like so many things. I think, go ahead. You want to say something? I'm going to like put my hand up every time I want to like chime in on something. One of my clients had recently, and I'm sure we could go on for like hours, which we won't, but talking about like how each client perceives and how we have perceived maintenance like I used to be the same way I'd be like maintenance like no way I'm totally not in there um and just clients like learning and understanding the value and importance of it and one of my clients had recently said she's like Ma the maintenance phase is where lifestyle happens and lifestyle balance happens I was like oh my god full body yes like absolutely because like when you're it can be either at the ends of the spectrum, whether you are in a caloric surplus and you're trying to really put on muscle or build your strength or whatever goal aligns with that, or you're in a caloric deficit and you're trying to change body composition or lose fat or whatever the goals that align with that are, is you, you have to be so much more adherent. And I think if you're in a caloric deficit or a caloric surplus, like if you have a specific goal and the reason why you're in that certain area, is you need to pay attention to detail. You need to be very adherent. You need to hit your macros. You need to do your training, mitigate stress, like all of that stuff. It's still very, very important. But being in your maintenance range or like a maintenance phase, or even like, you can even call it a maintenance season because in all honesty, and I'm sure you can agree, is like, we you should be in maintenance like more. When you get to that good range, like when you've kind of gone through the deficit and the surplus and you're like, okay, now I'm in maintenance, you find that gray area. like. When you look at a spectrum, there's black and then there's white. And that gray area is massive. That gray area is like 90% of the spectrum. And that's basically like an analogy with our life. Like we want to be in maintenance. We don't want to be dieting for our whole lives or in a surplus our whole lives because 
okay, I've surplus our whole lives. I don't think that's going to work. Um, but being in that maintenance range is where like balance can come into play. And you're like, I'm going to go out and not track a meal or you know what I mean? Like all of that stuff. So I just really wanted to make sure I emphasize that before. And I, I love what you said, how like maintenance is a range and that we can push it and it yes. does change. So what your maintenance calories were six months ago, doesn't mean that that's where they are now. And that's not necessarily a bad Thank God. Thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. For you, see, that's, that's a very good thing. Um, for me, my maintenance a few months ago was way better. Than <laughs> but anyway, I will let you continue. Um, but I do absolutely love, I love everything so far. Me too. And like, I think I had a client recently where she was a past client and we were just like chat, kind of chatting a little bit over Instagram. And she had mentioned how she, she's like, what did she say? She said something along the lines of surplus eating is where it's at for me. Like she's just learned to love it. This client was like someone who was so fearful of carbs and increasing her calories where every time I did an, a calorie increase for her, they were very small increases, but anytime I did an increase and the, if the scale shot up a little bit, it was like, oh my God, this is scaring me. But now she's realized like maintenance and being in even a slight surplus and pushing my training is where it's at for me now. It's what she enjoys. And she's not scared of those added calories anymore. And I think that's just so huge. And that's such a, in turn, it makes such a benefit for the person's life. Like even thinking back to me, like when I first started with you, I think we were doing a deficit because I wanted a fat loss phase. And that was something I had wanted, but the, the issue was my calories had already been so low from being in that deficit for so long. I was able to see progress because I was more adherent and I'm 100% honest with that. When we started, I was way more adherent with you having that weekly accountability than I was with my previous coach before that. And that helped me to see more progress. But then you mentioned, okay, we need to start increasing calories a little bit more and we did it so slowly because that's what I needed at that time in my life. Now, if you were like, um, we need to push a maintenance phase, I would of course be like, oh, frick, yes, let's go. I'm ready for a maintenance up phase. On carbs. Yeah, give me the food. Whereas it just shows how much like it changes as you grow and as you learn a little bit more about nutrition and about the different phases of nutrition because there are so many different phases. And now I live steadily and I'm happy in maintenance. Yes, it means I have a little bit more body fat on my body, but I'm okay with that. And I'm comfortable because it allows me to live a lifestyle that I'm happy living. I love that. So that is, yeah. So that is something that I really love about it. But if we talk about like the benefits of being in maintenance, which I think we've already talked a little bit about them, but just going to like more detail, it's like, you're going to see an improved sleep quality and likely quantity as well. You might even see better body composition for some people because you are able to train a little, you have a little bit more energy. You're able to push the weights a little bit more in the gym. You're getting stronger, but also the carbs are glycogen. So it's going into your muscles and pulling water into your muscles. So your muscles are going to look larger. Yes. Um, I feel like um, sorry, just like chiming in on that. Mm -hmm. It's, I'm sure you and I can really notice that a little bit differently after we do a competition and we are in that hard deficit. And ideally, like we want to reverse out of that as quickly as possible because mm -hmm. of the extremes that we have gone through, but we do this in a very smart way. It's not a, we try to avoid the rebound, but we try to do like a very aggressive refeed because it's, or, um, the maintenance or like getting back up to maintenance reverse because it's really necessary. Um, but the first like couple of weeks, there is usually like a huge spike in training performance. And even with our clients, when we can kind of encourage or push like, okay, we're going to use those carbs towards your workouts. And I'll be completely honest. And I'm sure you can probably agree that you've done this before as well is it's not bullshitting the client and saying like, oh, all these carbs that you eat is just going to magically go to your workouts and not a single one outside of your workout window is going to like be stored in your body. But like when we can encourage that, um, I think speaking the client's language 
is really, really important. And I don't try to lie to my clients. That's not the intention, but the intention is to connect with them in a way that works. So if we're saying, okay, we're going to start eating a little bit more carbs and they're scared of it. It's like, okay, well, let's put that around your workout. Let's put that pre and post workout, which is going to allow us to push in your training sessions and then recover better. And when the client gets that in their mind, when they kind of like understand and like they're consuming those carbs beforehand and they're like, oh, this is going to fuel my workout. It's almost like, no pun intended, I guess, but like fuel to the fire so that they go into the workout and they're like, I have all these extra carbs. I'm going to push harder. And it's like, it's not a placebo effect, but kind of in a way like it is, it's, it's that mental stimulation, right? And mm-hmm. your body goes where your mind leads it. Um, mm-hmm. So beliefs turn into actions. And I think, yeah, we can absolutely see better body composition. And when we can lean into that and have the client kind of click in to that opportunity, they're like, oh, that doesn't mean I'm just going to start gaining fat now. I'm like, no, 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 we can still make progress. And I think that's like, oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'll let you continue with all the other benefits. (laughs) Oh man, I could go on and on. This is the scary part. (laughs) But I think like how you said the client realizes, oh, like, hey, I'm not going to get fat by increasing my carbs a little bit. That's huge for them. And then being able to say, like, use those extra carbs around your workout or let's use those extra carbs in your workout. No, the extra carbs don't just go straight into your workout and into your training performance. We know that. But when we, when we can get the client's mindset to work towards that, it like changes things and it makes them less fearful of the carbs, of the calorie increases intentionally. And I think that's like what we try and do with our clients when we tell them that it's not like bullshitting them or like, we're not lying to them. We're just trying to get it in their mind. Like we don't need to be fearful of these. Let's use these and put and let's push really hard in our training performance. Let's push hard with our recovery. And like, then the client is like, oh, I can do that, that extra five pounds on this. Cause I think like, especially with like beginners or client, even intermediate, sometimes we're not pushing as hard as we can. And so if we can be like, oh, you use these extra carbs in your workout. It's like that little push where they're like, oh, I'm going to be I'm going to push that extra weight today in my hip thrusts or in my squats or in my deadlifts, whatever it is. And they're excited about it. And then their recovery is going to be that much better for it too. Yeah. So I think it's just like that. When we, when we have a client, let's just say that we are going a little bit slow with getting them out of the deficit, going into the maintenance and being in that phase. And even when we like slightly increase their carbs, like let's just say they're eating the equivalent of like a rice cake, a rice cake doesn't give you a squat PR. Let's be freaking honest people. Like, if so, I would be eating rice cakes like every all day, every day and being like, let's just PR on everything like that's not it. But it's that placebo effect. Right. Um, mm-hmm. And I think that, again, it's not trying to bullshit the clients, but it's like tapping into something that works for them. And you know what? Mm-hmm. If that placebo effect or that mindset works, let's roll with it. Exactly. Keep, keep going. And I love that. I'm not going to cut you off anymore. Keep going with some <laughs> other benefits of maintenance. <laughs> Well, also like when you're in maintenance and let's say you're coming out of a deficit, all of a sudden you're not going to be as food focused. You're not waiting for your next meal. You're not constantly hungry, but then there's also the reverse effects where if you're in a surplus, sometimes when you're in a really, and I know you can probably attest to this from past bikini prep, last preps, where when you're pushing food so hard and your calories are getting so high, sometimes you're getting really excited for that break on your digestive system to have maintenance calories back. It works both ways. It's not just for a dieting phase, but it can also be for people who are in a surplus as well. Um, Because even when you're in a surplus, there is that enhanced food focus because you have to be so focused on eating all the food that you're supposed to be eating, right? Like there's still that food focus there. It's not the same as if you were in a deficit where you're kind of like, oh, I'm hungry. I want more food. Like it's not that but you still have to be focused in the sense of ensuring your meal timing is there. Because I mean, if you're constantly eating, for example, let's say you're, you're eating like four or 500 grams of carbs, that's a shit ton of carbs to be eating in a day. And I mean, you're probably, especially when you're like, you're going to be having a certain protein goal and a certain fat goal, like you're pushing probably 3000 calories. And depending on the person that could be really challenging to consume. 
So it, it seems nice in theory when people are like, oh, I just want to eat so much food. It's like, okay, now let's try it. Let's do it mm-hmm. for an extended amount of time and see how much like havoc that wreaks on your digestive system. And like, it fucks up your social life. Be like, nope, got to eat. Nope, got to eat. It's, mm-hmm. it's great in theory. Exactly. That's, that's so true. You're like, I actually can't because I need to eat this much food in this certain window. And I mean, I'm going to be just exhausted after and probably not feel a hundred percent because I have to eat so much food. Even if you are using things that are easier on your digestive system, like, um, Gatorades or like the, the caloric Gatorade, for example, as a good option. That's like, it's not super, Oh, it's more calorie dense is the word I'm looking for. So like you're getting liquid calories, right? So like even something like that helps to increase your calories without eating a whole bunch of food. But I mean, I don't know what's a Gatorade a hundred and let's say it's 150 calories for a Gatorade. I mean, that's only like 30 grams of carbs. So when you're eating like 500, that's only putting a small dent in that window. Right. So it's kind of exciting to get back to that maintenance calories afterwards. Um, but you also have like more food freedom and flexibility within your choices once you hit your maintenance intake and you're, you're in that range, which also leads to an improved social life because yeah, you can go out for a meal without, maybe maybe you don't track it and it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't track a meal at, at maintenance. Um, and those are things that you can also focus on while you're in maintenance to inc- improve your mindfulness, improve um, your food choices when you're eating out because you don't wanna be track. Some people don't wanna be tracking their whole lives. And I mean, I don't track my whole life. I mean, there's days right now with my coach, I have one untracked meal per week and I'm in an off season right now. And we're still incorporating that one untracked meal because that's important for me to have. Just, I mean, not that tracking, creates stress, but it's just having that one meal that you're like, you know what, I'm going to enjoy whatever I want at this restaurant, but I'm still going to be mindful of my digestive system, of my goals. I'm not going to be a complete food jerk or asshole where I'm going to like, you know, order all the appetizers, all the fries, like get the greasiest thing on the menu. I'm not going to do that because I know I'm not going to feel good. I think a great, like a quick analogy that I thought of, um, in terms of that approach is like, just not being able to set your alarm on Sunday, even though you still know you're going to wake up early. It's just like one less thing that like is on your mind. So even though you're still being mindful of your nutrition, we're not calling it a cheat meal. Like we're not doing that. It's just one untracked meal where you're like, it's just one less thing on my team, mm-hmm. whether it's an easy habit or not, like it's just one less thing. And that just makes it really enjoyable. Now you can still do untracked days, whether you're in a surplus or when you're in a deficit, if that aligns with your goals, um, the times when it's necessary are very slim, <laughs> but there, there is a lot more freedom and opportunities to do that when you mm-hmm. are in a maintenance range. Yeah. And I think maintenance, like it can also just be a phase of life where you can enjoy life, like trips go on trips. You don't have to be super stressed about, um, your calories about working out. I mean, it just, it's a good phase of life to kind of be in. And it's, it not only like phase of life, but a good, whatever you want to call it, like season of fitness, maybe, or see season of life, or I mean, whatever, whatever it is you want to call it, it's just a good season to be in. And the thing that a lot of I find clients can some, they start off fearful of is they're just scared of the weight increase. And the thing is, is like your weight is going to increase if you're going from a deficit to maintenance, not, not for everyone, but depending on the person, it will increase just by, I mean, you're eating more food. You're going to have more food in your body at any given time. And food has weight, water has weight. So like if you have more food in your body, Pardon? Yeah, the the carbs. So for every one gram of carbs that our body will pull in or consume, it requires three grams of water. And what I just like to say in just easy terms is like, we're consuming that carbohydrate. We want that carbohydrate to go into our muscles because our muscles need energy. That's ultimately what carbs are. So how it gets 
from your mouth or your digestive tract into the muscles. It requires three little grams of water. So if we want to call it like a little tricycle, it's the three little wheels that carry it over there and deliver mm -hmm. it. So if you don't have that extra four grams, like if, if you're trying to be in maintenance, but your weight keeps dropping, you're not in maintenance, which also means that your muscles aren't getting the nutrients that it actually needs in order to not just grow, but to maintain its size. Absolutely. 100%. I love that. And I think that is something that uh, that can help a lot of clients to see like, oh, if I'm eating one gram more carb, that's three grams more water in my body. When you think about that 30 grams of carbs, times that by, um, what, what did I say? One, one gram of water is 30, say you're consuming 30 grams more carbs. So now 30 times three, you're now consuming 90 grams of water as well. So it's just like, kind of to put that into perspective a little bit. Now um, that for is not a, uh, for anyone who's listening, that is not like a specific numerical formula. So do not start calculating and saying, okay, well, based on this many grams of carbs that I'm consuming now, my weight now should be this. Like, please do not do no. that because you are a human and our bodies are not a numerical system like that. That is like, mm. <laughs> no, and everybody is so different and everybody is going to like digest certain foods differently in terms of what it retains and what it doesn't retain. Absolutely. I um, want to, um, do you have more benefits of maintenance that you want to go through? I do, but go ahead. Let, no, list them off like quickly. I want to shift gears a little bit on our combo. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm just going to go through and like just list, list things off. So there's like strength gains. We're going to see an imp improved strength. Um, you, we can even see like improved skin and hair health, improved hormones, improved gut health, improved libido, increased um, like a better mental kind of clarity type thing. You're just going, if you're coming out of a deficit more so for some of these things, if you're coming out of a deficit, you're going to have like improved um libido, improved mental clarity, that type of thing. Um, for some people, you might even, this is more so if you're coming out of prep and you lost a cycle, but you're going to have a more regular menstrual cycle as well. And it, there's just like the recovery from like the physiological and psychological effects of dieting. I mean, I think that part is huge because dieting is, or like being in a calorie deficit is physiologically stressful on your body, on the, on your mindset, on your body, we're all human. It all affects us differently, but it just provides that little bit of, I don't know, like a break from it, I guess. So those are all, it also like allows muscle to recover better because you're getting more food in your body, more carbs, more water, um, more protein, like those types of things are really good for recovery and it also helps improve your recovery. So even if you're coming out of a dieting phase, you're all of a sudden going to be moving a bit more, which is good for recovery because your, your body does need movement. I mean, sometimes we think that we can work out for an hour and then sit on our asses all day, but it, we still need to move our bodies. Like we are human. We still need to walk. We still need to move. So those are all some more benefits that go along with just maintenance. I'm Sure, there's plenty more that I missed, but those are just a few of them. Those are usually the common ones that we'll get like with our mm -hmm. lifestyle clients. Okay, so I wanna, I love all of that. And yeah, we could go on for like hours and on each each of those little little bullet points. Um, so usually when we go into maintenance, I'm gonna say not more often than not, but usually the common fear or the time where we'll usually apply maintenance is when we're in a, in a deficit. And then it's kind of like that stepping stone or that pivot from, from going into, from being in the deficit to starting to be in a surplus. Because a lot of clients, um, when we do this the first time, it's like, okay, we're, we're get, we'll have the conversation. We're like, okay, we're nearing the end of the deficit for all of these reasons. We have good communication. We have an agreement. We have an understanding. We need to transition. Clients will often think like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to have to start gaining weight now. And all of a sudden it's like, you're either in a diet or you're in a deficit or you're in a surplus. And there's like, we need that gray area. It's like, okay, well, we're not going to go from sleeping to running a, a marathon. Like 
we, we got to get up. We got to make that transition. We got to put our pants on, right? We got to put some underwear on. So maintenance is that transition time. So when we have hesitant clients that ultimately like the goal with most of our clients is like, we'll go from the deficit, then we'll go into maintenance, which slowly gets them into that surplus. But there is always, 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 always some kind of resistance. And that's not like, I don't want to gain weight. A lot of the resistance is just the fear of the unknown. They haven't done it before, or they've heard things about it, or they have tried it before. And they're like, I trust my coach entirely, but I just don't feel good about it. Like there, there's one thing to like trust the coaches, but then there's one thing to like, you can still be hesitant when you're trusting your coach, right? Because in theory, how everything is laid out and explained, it all makes sense. But then how that actually applies to your life is different. So I want to know from you, how do we, or how do you have the conversation with the client to basically get them to agree in their own way, not like we're forcing them, but get them to be okay with going from the deficit into maintenance and then pushing into our transitioning slowly into the caloric surplus. What's maybe even if you have um, client examples or a current client going through this, how do you, how do you approach that? So this is, it's dependent on the client, of course, but like, like you said, a lot of our clients are going from fat loss. They've never done like a maintenance phase or they've never done a phase similar to this. So it really depends on the client with how like in depth I need to go with like with with my explanation for maintenance so each person is different so in the sense of say this client is really really scared maybe I'm going to increase their calories even slower than I would someone else even if even if they're both scared for example maybe this person is like really fearful they had a poor experience maybe um that person I only increase their calories by like five grams of something like maybe five grams of carbs, for example. Um, and then this other client, they are still hesitant. They're a little bit fearful, but they are more understanding of the process and of what's going to happen. So maybe I can increase their carbs by like 10 to 15 grams instead of five. And they're not going to be quite as, they're not going to be super afraid of that increase. Whereas, um, the client who I'm increasing five grams of carbs, they've had a poor experience or, or whatever it is. They're just, they're fearful. But one thing that we can, I like doing is kind of explaining the benefits, like shifting their focus from the scale and from the number side of things. Because even when you hire a coach and when you're in a deficit, it feels like everything is some numbers based, right? You're wanting the scale to go down. You're wanting your measurements to go down. You're paying attention to your macros and hitting your calorie targets spot on, all of those things. So then when we can shift the focus from that numbers perspective, so from um, the scale, from body measurements, and kind of shift it into um, other areas of your life, like your relationship with food. Maybe we can shift the focus into like eating more fruits and vegetables. Like that's going to give you a little bit more carbs without like, I mean, it's not gonna do anything to your body. And even explaining to the client, like the caloric value of the increase that I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it's one rice cake, like one rice cake yeah. is going to make you fat in a day or in a month or whatever. Mm -hmm. like, like it's 35 calories for one plain rice cake. It, that's not going to be the end of the world. It's like seven grams of carbs, I think. So I mean, like something like that, if you can explain, if I can explain it to them like that and be like, Hey, like you said earlier, let's use these extra carbs and let's use them around your workout. I actually did this with, uh, mindful portions client recently where they we increased one car point and I just said use it around your workouts use that as your post-workout after after your workout go and have a, a bowl of oatmeal like something like that it's just or have some rice and chicken whatever you want eat something that you, you're going to enjoy but use that extra point around your workout and it's going to be that much better for you like you're not going to gain weight automatically. It's just that mindset thing again, and then shifting the focus into other areas of their life. Like, like, Hey, this is a great time for you 
to maybe one day a week, you want to go out with your husband or your significant other or boyfriend and girlfriend, and you want to go out for a meal, like go do that, enjoy it, have fun with it. Um, and just things like that, or like, um, getting them to like, yeah, I, th I think it's really important to get them to be confident in their choices, but then seeing yes. what, what I like to do, it's come, almost like being like the reflection for them. So it's like, you give them the option when they choose to act upon that option or that opportunity. And then they're like, Hey, I ate that bowl of oatmeal after I worked out and it felt great. Then that's how they develop the confidence. So it's not, this is why we don't do meal plans. One, because it's beyond our legal scope of practice, mm -hmm. but also because of this, like we want to help clients build their self-efficacy and to know that these phases and these different transitions in life are really important. Like you said, putting, like starting to do things that have been put off, like on your to-do list. And mm -hmm. I think it's also a great thing that we commonly do is we'll align clients diet or deficit and they're like maintenance and surplus phases based on the seasons of the year so mm -hmm. when they are in the summertime and maybe we want to do like a deficit in the spring so that they look good and feel good in the summer but then maybe in the summertime we go into maintenance because that's when they're having barbecues and stuff like could you imagine being and I'm sure like we've all been through it where we're trying to diet through the summer because we want to look a certain way and it's like, oh, but I can't go to that barbecue. Or if you do, then it's just like set, set like the, um, you're all four tires on fire slash them all, because mm -hmm. if you can't have balance, you're just going to have nothing. I think another thing yeah. that's really important to focus on is changing the goal, not changing the goals, but making sure that we are focusing on the right thing. So if we are going to chase numbers, let's chase numbers in the gym. Let's focus on building up your strength. Like you and I, you and I have done that before and be like, you know what? Okay. Mm -hmm. we're, we focused on the fat loss phase. Now let's transition. Let's, let's focus on getting strong. How freaking empowering is that? Like, how fun is that? And I really think it's important to emphasize that I believe not having a goal in maintenance. Cause like, obviously if we're in a deficit, we have a goal to lose fat. If we're in mm -hmm. a surplus, we have a goal to lose, to build muscle, mm -hmm. but it's, I, I feel like it's good not to chase a goal because there's less pressure. And this is where like that lifestyle balance comes in. And it's not like that all or nothing mindset where you can just kind of like lax and chill out a little bit more. I think mm -hmm. it's, I think that's really important. And ultimately, and I'm sure you can agree with me is that like when most of our clients come to us, they have two goals that are somehow joined like seamlessly together and it's all one word and it's all hyphenated, lose fat, gain muscle. Yep. Like, oh, okay. So if we're going to go in, if, if we want to lose fat, we need to be in a deficit. If we want to gain muscle, we need to be in a build. But what happens when we tap out on one of those? We, we got to get the other one because we can't. Exactly. You can't build muscle in a deficit and you can't lose fat in a surplus. So, no. but the thing is, you can do that in maintenance when you have an insane amount of attention to detail with the right protocols and with a shit ton of patients, because it's going to take a hell of a lot longer, but it is possible. You've done it. I've done it. We've done it with clients before, but it does take a much longer time when you're not multitasking. You can focus on one thing a lot better, but if we want to lose fat and gain muscle and have that like toned, ideal, shapely physique, whatever it is that we want, like we all have these goals. We're all bullshitting ourselves. If we say we don't have aesthetic goals and you're like, I just want to be healthy. It's like, yeah, but if you had like visible abs and like a bicep flex at the same time, would you be happier? Probably. So that's what we're here for. So when we can honestly, like maintenance has so many great benefits. It's just, it's great for having a life and thriving. Makes that phase that like clients forget about because they're so concerned about fat loss or building muscle like you said like there's that lose fat build muscle and like there's that huge gray area that we're missing out on that's me you know what I mean yeah it's like that that huge gray area that's in there and maintenance is such a an important part of every single um phase every single client's like journey maintenance is so important and I just think it's something that's so undervalued in not in the fitness industry but in like client people regular people they just don't understand what 
what maintenance is. They don't understand the benefits of it. And because everyone's just like, I want to lose fat. I want to lose fat. I want to gain muscle. It's it's those two hard goals. Yeah. Right. So I, I just think that that is something that client that I wanted to like kind of tackle today and like just chat about the, the benefits of it because it's not all bad. Like yeah. you're not, it's you know a, what I mean? Like, trust me, if, if you can be in maintenance, it's a good place to be, especially when you have yeah. like a coach guiding you and I'm not trying to plug, but while we're here, I might as well plug our business anyway, but having a coach to like guide you and to reassure you and to focus on the right things. And again, you can still change your maintenance. You can be in maintenance mm-hmm. and still increase your calories and build strength and improve your body composition. Like all those little things are still very, very achievable to happen. Um, and you're doing it with like balance and more control and more food freedom and enjoyment and less pressure. And there's just so many great things. Um, just such a good time. Sorry. Just a great time to like improve your relationship with food. Honestly, yeah. like it's improve your relationship with yourself, with others. <laughs> like, yeah, there are so many mm-hmm. great things. Everything. Um, I do have to wrap this up because I'm, we're less than one minute on zoom right now and it's going to cut us off. So Kayla, thank you so much for this amazing conversation. I think it was great. I'm confident that it is going to help the listeners, whether they're our clients or new potential clients, um, or anyone who's just interested in following CFL coaching They're they're definitely going to benefit from it and hopefully have a new and improved perspective on the maintenance phase or the maintenance range or the maintenance season of their life. So thank you again for all of that. Um, Listeners and viewers, I want to say thank you for hanging out here. You can follow us on Instagram at CFL coaching. I'm Courtney for life underscore Kayla is Kayla Mouse.fitness. Are you going to update yours to your married name? I haven't decided yet. (laughs) Something hard to get. But anyways, all of those links will be in the notes below however you're viewing this um and if you do have any questions then just send us a message either of us or the coaching page and we will get back to you courtneyforlife.com slash coaching is where you can find all of our coaching information and we will chat later have an awesome day strong friends thanks for hanging out with us Bye. bye